I saw most of touch upon biology and uh, biophysics. So I hope you'll find it as a as an interesting story, and maybe I inspire you to think whether such shortcuts to thermal relaxation. So essentially, what I'll be talking about are shortcuts to thermal relaxation. Whether they, whether you can think about a biological setting where they could appear. Um, one place where I might think that something like this might appear is maybe in chemical reactions and maybe with molecular motors. So, but uh, this is kind of um, something that I just think of. it's not the topic of today. Uh, so, so let me let me dive into it, and because it's different. Uh, uh, than the other talks, and uh, uh, well, uh, there might be some jargon. Uh, please interrupt me with questions. So I want to talk about shortcuts to thermal equilibrium in uh, uh, Langevin dynamics. This is just diffusion of. A, in my case, it's going to be just a diffusion of a particle on on some potential landscape. For the experts, this is the overdamp limit and inertial effects are not important. But just you can think of it diffusion on a landscape, and I want to talk about it in anti uh, Along the way, um, so I, uh, I, uh, so the work that I'm going to talk about uh, are uh, the work that I did together with my students as well. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, there is seems to be some lag, or, or at least I haven't. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen your do you, uh, slide. Do you see my second? Do you see no. my second? No, only see your first one. That's very strange. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, let's back up. Let me share. Sorry, uh, let me share from uh, the same machine that I'm the time on. Then maybe there will be no um, uh, interruption with the. It must be some. I should tell you that uh, our physics department is under uh, construction. And uh, there are some network issues, so maybe that's what's going on. So I'm gonna just share my desktop, and uh, we're just gonna do it this way, maybe old-fashioned way. Now everybody sees my screen and my cursor, right? Hopefully. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so okay. excellent. Mm -hmm. So uh, so then there should be a way to go to the next slide. Okay. Yes. So um, these are my collaborators and my students. I learned about the Mapemba effect from Oren Raz when he visited us in uh, 2017, 2018. And, and I'll mainly speak about the work that I did with Oren, the trial click and Ori Kirschberg, as well as the work with Matt Walker. Uh, we have an upcoming work with Saikat and Matt, which touches upon this chemical reaction that I mentioned. And, um, all right, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about some unusual ways. Everybody has everybody has some intuition how we cool things, how things cool down and how things heat. So you can think about, for example, that you have your cup of water and you and it's hot and you put it in a freezer. And then uh, you kind of wait and wait for it to relax and it uh, uh, finally it freezes. Uh, as the sort of uh, environment around this is kind of uh, low, uh, the temperature is low enough. Now you're a good experimentalist. You can repeat the experiment. You can take another cup of water, identical cup, uh, and you put it in. If you're a good experimentalist, in a different freezer and you let it relax, uh, but you prepare this at a warm temperature, not at a hot temperature. Our intuition tells us that the one that uh, um, Kind of uh, closer to the environment equilibrium. So in this case, the the cup that's prepared with warm te warm temperature will arrive faster, because our intuition is uh, uh, is uh, based on our observation. Uh, typically, things cool down slowly. In uh, in particular, if they were to cool down kind of quasi statically, then well, then this uh, then 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 my cup of water would stay in equilibrium along its way, the temperature would not just be, um, you know, an, an initial label, it would, it would be a, a welly thing, uh, sort of, even without the, um, uh, it, it wouldn't be just an initial label, sort of, it would exist during the trajectory, and the 
hot system would necessarily arrive later to thermalize later than the warm system. But what if I do things fast? So if I'm doing things fast, uh, then um, then uh, um, all the bets are all the bets are off. Uh, there are many trajectories linking my hot system to the uh, to the to the final state, which is an equilibrium at the temperature of the bath. And uh, along these many trajectories in the space where this probability distribution lives, there might be such where the hot system um, kind of is uh, uh, unusual ones where the hot system arrives there faster in some sense than the warm system. So I'm interested in those. I'm interested in the so-called Mapemba effect. Um, and uh, and I want and uh, I define it as uh, you have a, your system, you prepare it in some equilibrium. It doesn't match. Uh, it doesn't match the so, so it, for me equilibrium means that it has the Boltzmann distribution, but uh, but it doesn't match uh, the the temperature of the environment in which I place it, and I I place it I quench it I I kind of uh, so there is no equilibrium in between the initial point and the final point, and then I measure how fast uh, each of these trajectories evolve. So to the system prepared at a hot temperature and system prepared at a warm temperature. And um, I uh, and actually you observe and we know from uh, works of uh, Lou and Raz and then also from experimental work of uh, John and uh, and Rafael and uh, and Avinash Kumar that uh, um, actually both in heating and in cooling there are such unusual trajectories where the hot team hot system seems to freeze faster or the cold system seems to heat up uh, faster. So historically, the Mpemba effect was first, um, um, of the, uh, well, if, if you look at the literature, then you see that Aristotle wrote about it and uh, Descartes wrote about it, but let's say in modern, modern times, uh, um, and it was uh, rediscovered by Erasto Bartolomeo Mpemba, and uh, he was a uh, um, Tanzanian um, student and he was uh, and he was interested in making ice cream. Now nobody can argue that making ice cream faster is a, a worthy research cause. So um, so he put uh, um, the story goes that he put in an ice cube tray milk, a little bit of sugar, and then put it in a freezer, and observed that the warm milk seemed to freeze faster. So then later on, since uh, this is uh, um, this is not a well-defined experiment, later on uh, with Doug Osborne, they measured uh, uh, with cup with water, and they measured starting from different initial temperatures with their protocol, uh, sort of the, a, a quantity which they called time to start freezing. Here there can be many uh, many objections on how you. Uh, define the time to start freezing, uh, and uh, and there are also many different dynamics. Not all dynamics show the effect, but um, it was uh, seen also by um, other groups and also in other systems. So when I say it was seen, the the way that I defined it in the beginning, the way that I learned from uh, Oren Raz and Jiu Lu is. Uh, Sort of, I take my system, I prepare it in one one well-defined state, and I let it cool down. And I take my system, I prepare it in a different state, the one that uh, you know. The, when, if I were to measure, sort of, in some sense, it's closer to the to the target, and I let let it relax in an identical uh, in an identical with an identical protocol. So in that sense. A experiment showed that water uh, is one of uh, one of the systems that shows this anomalous relaxation. Also, our flat rate hydrates, also granular fluids, colloids, polymers, and uh, antiferromagnets, and the list is long. Numerically, it was also seen in a in a wide variety of systems. So it seems to be a general thing. So can we? Um, can we say something about it? Uh, 
can 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 we say when it happens or can we provide intuition why it happens this, these are the questions that interest uh, interest me and uh, or, and uh, when you start to think about them if uh, if your um, system is uh, is so rich and so complicated as water then uh, then um, it's it's hard so we still don't know what, why the effect happens in water some uh, uh, there have been many proposals these proposals cannot be detached from the dynamics maybe the proposal is correct with a specific dynamic then it will be at the end of the day dynamic dependent but for example um, in water you have hydrogen bonds is it uh, because of the hydrogen bond if you look at the first two candidates clatrate hydrates and water they both have hydrogen bond maybe that's uh, the reason or maybe it's impurity or maybe uh, water is special so um uh, there are um there are many uh, uh, there are many reasons besides uh, understanding this uh, optimal cooling and heating protocols that one might think about it some are uh, some are you know less maybe less physical uh, others are uh, um others more um, so we are always in search for all optimal heating and cooling protocols we are also always in search for kind of uh, something that we can say about out of equilibrium systems and uh, we are also in search for maybe efficient ways of sampling the phase space now these are these are these are shortcuts uh, at the end of the day Mapemba effect is a shortcut on kind of reaching your target distribution so understanding it better can lead to many different avenues uh, of um, uh, and have a variety of applications from numerical simulations to, to maybe maybe designing you know maybe aiding the sort of uh, maybe the Mapemba effect can can work as a sort of quote unquote uh, catalyst sort of if I perturb a little bit my initial conditions I'll relax better so let me tell you. Uh, what are the minimal ingredients? Um, and uh, so here I list two questions. Essentially, I'll touch only on the first one. So uh, the, what are the minimal, minimal ingredients for an FM effect? The second question, let me answer immediately. It appears in many systems. This, is, this still doesn't mean that you'll see it easily, but we've worked on it. Uh, and at least in some toy models like um, of disordered systems, the name is the random energy models it seems to be generic it seems to happen with finite probability so it seems to if you are if you are searching for it you're not searching for a needle in a haystack sort of seems that you can um at least there are examples where it happens with finite probability so uh if there are some questions i i try to monitor the chat but i don't see any please uh just uh ask me um so uh, relaxation. So I'm going to talk about relaxation dynamics. It's going to be um, it's going to be Markovian, meaning that I only know I need present information to know the future. I don't need the past. Uh, my initial condition is um, equilibrium at the wrong temperature, and my final condition is the the, the equilibrium at the correct temperature. Correct meaning mean, mean here temperature of the bath. Um, uh, and then I need a way how to measure. So some sort of notion of, uh, of distance. Uh, there are many different distances between functions that we can introduce, but the bottom line is once you have a distance between two functions, then if they cross kind of in time, uh, sort of if the hot system overtakes the, the cold system, then you know that your effect happens. Um, so when does it happen? So in this uh, special system that I will be discussing, the, uh, everything can be decomposed. You know, my probability distribution can be decomposed into the target distribution, the equilibrium at the end, plus some corrections. And corrections depend on the mode. And these modes are ordered. So lambda two is a lambda two is the crucial factor here. I'm looking at the last steps of this thermal relaxation and lambda two is the slowest mode of your system. This thing, once it dies down that mode, uh, the, uh, this, the, those corrections die down and I'm at the steady state that I want. So 
the amplitude to, to this, um, so the direction is given by the second eigenvector, the, uh, the, the relaxation is given by this uh, eigenvalue, so this is this exponential relaxation down, and the amplitude is the thing that knows about the initial condition. So this, so the, so the claim is uh, that the, the uh, so, so, you know, so you know that if you start from the, the correct temperature, then, well, already there's no cooling or heating, uh, your amplitude is zero, you, this, there are no corrections here, you're already where you want to be. Um, right, so you're already where you want to be, so you don't, don't have it. Uh, but if you are, uh, but uh, if you are not starting at the correct temperature, if you're starting infinitely far away, well, then uh, you know that uh, you do not, you are not sensitive to the, to the, your landscape is flat. I mean, you can, you, you escape any traps uh, given by the, given by the peculiarities of your system. So your system can easily be in any configuration. So then this amplitude doesn't depend on temperature if the temperature is infinitely high. So, so it flattens out to a constant. So if you connect this uh, slope here, sort of this uh, zero here and the constant in a non-monotonic way, um, uh, rather than lose all that will have the effect. Why? Because, because this three factor, the, only, the amplitude, the only thing that knows about the initial conditions will be smaller for the hot system. So you'll be closer to equilibrium than for the warm system. Now, um, you can ask me, so which system can do it? So something as simple as, as uh, hopping between three states. Uh, uh, hopping with these three, three states with rate such, um, don't mind these formulas, but uh, this is detailed balance, with rate such that, uh, um, um, such, that the, uh, such that I converge to the correct equilibrium. Uh, so I can find an amplitude, which is non-monotonic, signaling that I have the effect. Um, can can the effect be more dramatic? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, I told you that uh, uh, if I have an infinitely um, hot system, the amplitude is independent of temperature. But I didn't tell you that it doesn't have to have the same sign. Uh, it doesn't have to be positive. So if you start off positive here, in order to connect to this negative one, it means you have to cross to zero, at least one. So why is this point special? So this point is special because at this particular point, your initial condition is so special that, uh, that you don't have any projection on the slowest direction. So how do you then relax? Well, then you relax with the next loss and the next loss is exponentially faster relaxation. So if you were to measure the, and uh, um, uh, the, the, you would see a dip in the relaxation time. And uh, indeed, it was uh, uh, so. This is the strong Mopemba effect uh, uh, that uh, we suggested in this PRX that should exist. And then John Bethofer and uh, Avinash Kumar uh, found it. The, uh, uh, it was it was wonderful. Uh, they they found it in a uh, in a colloidal system. So here's the antiferromagnet. I promised you. So the antiferrom. This is a very simple antiferromagnet. All of these things belong to one group. And they don't talk to each other. And these are uh, these are spins which can be either up or down. And they only talk to the members of the other group. And uh, and the the way that they talk is uh, is an um, they talk with an um, interaction that um, that's antiferromagnetic. So so and uh, and then um, and there's also a magnetic field. So this is what we call a mean field. And in this mean field, there are two important numbers. One is uh, how many spins I have uh, that are up on the first light, uh, what's the magnetization of the first lattice, so the uh, and what's the magnetization of the second lattice, x1 and x2. That's all that's important. Um, magnetization is the difference between the spins pointing up and spins pointing down on the on a, on a lattice. So do I have the effect here and what, what kind of an effect is it? Well, I have the effect and uh, this is, uh, for example, for Glauber dynamics, for this mean field uh, model, uh, a, 
the different uh, so this is a phase phase so i'm showing here the um the temperature of the bath and i'm showing here a magnetic field and uh, this is the transition line between an antiferromagnet and the paramagnet so here i here my pins like to be like checkerboard ordered antiferromagnetically and here um and um so this is a line of phase transition and wherever it's white i do not have for that particular dynamic, any surprises. There's no Mapemba effect. But where it isn't white, uh, this, this zoo of colors tell me what kind of a shortcut to equilibrium I have. Do I have it in cooling? Do I have it in heating? Do I have it in such a way that the relaxation time jumps or I don't? So what I have, that would mean that whether I have the, or the weak Mapemba effect or the strong Mapemba effect. And for different dynamics, I would get a different picture. But for, uh, qualitatively, although these beautiful pictures would change, I, I expect to have regions where I have the effect for the um, antiferromagnet. I can look about it in a different way. Um, and um, and uh, right, so I uh, so. So this is a uh, this is a line of all uh, kind of, um, right. So due to the due to the due to time, um, I'm just gonna say this is a flow chart where I start off in some equilibrium and then I relax down to another equilibrium. Equilibrium points are on this blue line, and uh, I can see that all of these kind of have a one. Get, kind of have a some direction, and after a while, close to equilibrium, they all fall on this slow direction. All except one of them. You can see this visually. This one has no projection to the slow direction. That's the strong map, but trajectory. Um, so, so that that one is in this system. There's one, and it's special for for these uh, parameters. Um, and um, right, and in a Different, uh, I want to leave you so, so in antiferromagnet, uh, to wrap up the story with antiferromagnet, uh, we, uh, here there are two different, mm, there are the magnetization of the two lattices that are important. And, uh, I can, the system is rich enough even in mean field that I can find the special trajectories from which the relaxation is faster. Fortunately, uh, uh, because I want, want to say one more thing about Langevin dynamics, um, I, um, I, I, I uh, have to move on. So, all right, so suppose uh, this is my landscape Can, uh, and uh, I want to cool things down. So I want to have the, my, my probability to find the particle to be this blue curve. Uh, can, I, um, can I achieve it? Um, can I achieve it in some way? Can I uh, maybe um, can, can I can I can, can I more uh, who more faster to this blue distribution, the red one or the one or the this one which is kind of pinkish? So the pinkish is the 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 warm temperature, the in between temperature. So I'm claiming, the, and that's what the Mapemba effect is, that there are cases, there are special initial positions for which it's easier to re, uh, for the red one to to kind of in time take the shape of the blue one, then the, to start from the red one and to morph into the this full distribution. So we know that that you know that probably metastable states are important in this case, and probably the geometry is is also important. For example, in this landscape, I didn't draw it uh, uh, accidentally. I drew it because I have a metastable state. And I also have another state, which is rather shallow. So I assume that this barrier is easier to jump over and that the relaxation is fast from there, where from here it is slow. To keep the long story short and on time, we studied this problem, the diffusion on a landscape. And we obtained a lot of info, uh, intuition that uh, by studying various soy models, like uh, something that you can find in a quantum mechanics textbook, and we uh, and we all and we also were fortunate enough to to um, that uh, our experimental colleagues studied the same system, 
and they they studied the uh, um, they studied the col uh, sort of a colloid and in an optical trap, and they had hot starts and warm starts and and cold starts. And you by now you are trained whatever you have a crossing between a warm and a hot that means a methemba effect, and they've seen the effect. And they also saw beautifully that this uh, this dip in the relaxation time, which signals that you have the strong methemba effect. And they linked it to an asymmetry of the domain. So that when the asymmetry of the domain was was uh, large, they, uh, they 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 saw that they have the strong methemba effect. So that was uh, John and uh, Avinash, and uh, uh, and then um, so so okay, uh, so a semi-log on a straight line means exponential decay, and and they also left us with a Kind of uh, so their setting is uh, is uh, very similar to the typical setting of a Kramer's problem. So if you have a, a large barrier and you have small diffusion, this is a problem that is well studied. And they provided a piece of intuition that they observed the um, strong Mapemba effect when the so when the probability to be in the left well, so this whole pink uh, rectangle is the same at the initial condition and at the final condition. So in other words, when all of the probability is already there, it just needs to drape a little bit different. And we were um, you know, the, I, I, I'm lo looking at the time, so let me just tell you that um, my students, Matt Walker and I, we were able to compute so that it is indeed so in this overdamped limit. That the necessary condition for the strong Mutemba effect, the leading order is exactly what uh, uh, John and Avinash said that uh, when the cumulative probability to be at the, uh, so basically uh, this picture that they provided, when the cumulative probability to be in the left well uh, initially is the same as, uh, as that finally. So just the shape is different. Um, let me stop. Uh, I uh, spoke to you about the Mepemba effect in that it is a general phenomenon, shortcut in thermal relaxation. I mm, I uh, I didn't tell you that strong Mepemba has topological features, but strong Mepemba is uh, exponentially faster. It has a dip in the relaxation time, and uh, the simple systems uh, that we studied uh, from them, we have some. We are piecing out together intuition on uh, the importance of metastable states and on the importance of the geometry of the domain and the potential. Uh, in particular, sort of uh, another simple system that I might think of that might, might relate to biology are maybe Brownian clocks or, or uh, molecular motors where, 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 where we might soon, I hopefully be able to say something more. So let me leave it at that in due to time. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Maria. I know this is a, um, a topic not typically uh, people hear, but I think this is re very relevant, right? So mainly you talk about the question, uh, you know, if you have a hot system, then how uh, it may dissipate its energy to the environment. Then, uh, you know, right, this, uh, I heard this fact uh, uh, for many times, but I haven't really thought about uh, the mechanism. And I know Ju, uh, you, you mentioned Jiu Lu. Um, so can I just uh, say a few things, you know, when I hear, uh, hear your talk, um, well, what reminded me is uh, in chemistry, there's an RTM theory. In the middle, I think similar thing is you have a unit molecular reaction, you have sub uh, modes, then you, you know, you can uh, excite them. Then um, in some cases, they may prevent this energy dissipate to the remaining system. So it's mainly uh, the, uh, the effect is how efficient you can couple your uh, the uh, your uh, the mode of your subsystem and the remaining bus, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. The coupling helps to the dissipation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I and, see. and uh, I think your end point is uh, for certain system like you have much stable state mentioned. You know, actually, a much stable a hotter system may actually help the the system to escape to the to the to the uh, to the low. Right. Uh, right. Right, right. The most naive picture would be the hot system helps the metastable states to escape, uh, uh, to escape, and uh, and there are also sort of, and also there are more guys relaxing in in the because the 
because uh, you can think that your system is free to take also the other higher levels. Sort of there are more guys on the fast track of relaxation. So you might think the hotter start is always better, but it turns out the hotter start isn't always better. So then, uh, so it's a little bit subtle. The geometry also plays a role. Sort of you need to have uh, the the just the right metastable state, just the right initial condition, and and a wide kind of path. Uh, this uh, basin with the with the you know um, state which relax fast. So um, you know simply with or kite wouldn't cut it. Sort of uh, it's more more than that. 